So let's start in a meditation. Find your breath right away, just your friend, the breath. It's right there, it's always right there, right where you left it. We don't notice our breath very often, it's just, we're just breathing. But when the breath becomes conscious, right, it starts to change our relationship with ourself. And we're always trying to more deeply connect to ourselves, right, through the breath as a beginning place. Because the breath will give you so much information about your stress levels, about how you are sort of managing your body. When the breath is held, it's like a contraction. Right? And the whole body is tightening, in a sense, waiting for the next inhale, right? Because we usually are inhaling and holding. Like that, see? <laughs> and so it's just like this, right? It takes our breath away, right? It's a gasp. And so it causes a fight-or-flight response because you're telling the nervous system danger, right? So when you breathe on purpose, inhaling, Exhaling and exhaling, think of an exhale, like do a deep exhale now. Feel the sigh in it. So inhale and then exhale audibly. So you, because what we do when we're relaxed is we finally exhale. So what's more typically happening when we're stressed is we're inhaling and holding our breath. And that's it. I'm still holding my breath right now, <laughs> still, now. So now I'm gonna breathe, right? So it's like that, it's happening all day long. We don't even know it. As soon as we concentrate, as soon as we're just listening, as soon as we're you know, trying to have good handwriting or anything, when there's concentration, the breath tends to be held. And certainly, if there's danger, we hold our breath. But what you want to do is you start to teach your body that the breathing is natural and you're starting to change the chemical reaction in the body to produce the hormones and chemistries that produce peace, right? Peace in me, peace in my body. So when you're ready, we're going to start with the breath. And today I want you to breathe into your pelvis. So you want you to feel like you could breathe through your pelvis, like you could inhale through the floor of the pelvis and exhale through the floor of the pelvis. Now just imagine that you're doing this because we're gonna work in this area a little bit. So I want you to already be aware of your pelvis or how you're sitting, where you're sitting. Just feel the contact of the, the bones, the sitting bones, sitting on whatever you're sitting on, that you can feel that contact. And you're inhaling through the floor of the pelvis and exhaling through the floor of the pelvis. And as you do that, I want you to imagine the sort of wings. If you think of the pelvis, if you see the bones, and I would show a picture here, but just imagine, you can just see my hands, the pelvic bowl, right? It's a bowl that holds all of those lower intestines and the bladder, and it holds all that area, that these are kind of a little bit mobile. They kind of open and close and open and close. Can you imagine that? That the pelvic bones actually move a little bit when we breathe. So when you inhale into the bowl of the pelvis, just imagine that those great big ears, like elephant ears of the side of the pelvis are kind of expanding and contracting, just slightly, very subtly. You're inhaling and exhaling into the bowl of the pelvis and try to feel that area in your mind's eye because if this area is tight, and most people it is tight here, you'll know because sitting cross legs hard, butterfly pose is hard, um, you have lower back pain often, you have tight psoas, those are kinds of some of the conditions that can occur when the pelvis is tight, tight hamstrings, tight inner thighs, tight straddle, right? All those would be tight pelvic floor. And so as you're breathing, you're imagining that those big ears of the pelvic, or I call them the fenders of the pelvis, are moving gently, like it, organically, right? So you inhale, the pelvis expands, exhale, the pelvis relaxes, and you're just kind of bringing awareness into the floor of the pelvis. 
So if there's been trauma to the floor of the pelvis, which most people have had some kind of trauma, for instance, like falling on your tailbone, right? And so many people have broken tailbones or fractured tailbones, it's very common, right? Or you've had any kind of um, sexual abuse, for instance, right? That would close up the floor of the pelvis. You can imagine all the scenarios of just nervousness of uh, uh, that clenches in the lower body. And so what we're really working on right now is we're just trying to get some space in there. And I want you to notice as you breathe into your pelvis, what comes up? What comes up? And I would posit that fear could come up because it's the first chakra, right? This is survival. This is how do I live? <laughs> how do I be no matter, you know, if the tiger's chasing me or not? How, how do I survive? And if there's any nervousness about survival, like financial survival, emotional survival, personal survival, health survival, all those kinds of subjects which are very up right now in the air of our world right now, then the first chakra and the pelvic bowl that contains that first chakra might be very agitated or stressed, right? Just from nervous tension. And so one of the things that happens with people and their pelvic bowl is we can constrict the gluteus maximus, right? The glutes. We can just tighten up, you know, like all the time though. And in our language, we have slang for that. And that's a person that always clenches their glutes it would be called a tight ass, <laughs> right? And, and there's that, and that's actually a phrase in our language that means that because it's a tension, right? It's a tension all the time, not like that. It's a tight, tense kind of thinking, tense kind of body. So if you relax your glutes, or are they tense, first of all, and if you could relax them more, now what comes up? Now what comes up? Well, I'll tell you what's down here, you guys, that's important, that you want. Life force, that's what's there. First chakra, life force, creativity, power, energy, right? Autoimmune system problems can be healed by the first chakra by opening up that first chakra air energy and letting it come into the rest of your body. Because we tend to cut energy off in various places, very often in the throat chakra, in the jaw, right? Or in the heart constriction, or in the solar plexus, tight, I don't, you know, self-denial. But in the glutes, it's about life force, your life force. So, relax the glutes and feel how the spine just raises like a flower from the seed that it comes from under the soil, right? First chakra. And out of this seed comes this little shoot, right? And it's strong, it's got life force, and it's got to push through the dirt in order to reach the surface. And then it goes beyond the surface and it actually grows up into a tree, right? All from a seed. So think of the first chakra as this concentrated energy ball that you want that life force to move and not be stagnant and not stuck. So walking is good for that, right? And yoga is good for that. And Tai Chi is good for that. And all those things that kind of bring that life force up. And all the martial arts where there's so much focus on the chi, right? And that second chakra and first chakra. So you're working with that energy, waking it up. So as you're here, you're inhaling and exhaling. Into the pelvic floor though. And notice that when you breathe into the pelvic floor, that it naturally causes the breath to become naturalized, meaning inhale, the belly expands. Exhale, it relaxes. Inhale, the belly expands. Exhale, it relaxes. And as you're exploring the bowl of the pelvis in this meditation, in this breathing exercise, in this pranayama, which is what we're working on, breath, controlled breath, with a particular focus, which is what pranayama does, 
and we're filling the pelvis with our breath, feel what feelings come up in relationship to this area. It could be very uncomfortable and I just want you to know if that's true, let it be. So it's very uncomfortable. That's information that you want to know. Why is that uncomfortable? And you may know and you may not know. Yes? But meanwhile, you just keep asking, breathing into the pelvis, inhale the belly expands, exhale the belly relaxes, inhale the ears of the elephant move out of the pelvis, exhale they kind of flat back in. And you want this sense of very slow butterfly wings, just like this, there's a similar uh, bone contraption, I'm going to call it, right at the third eye as there is at the pelvis, similar. And they both move. They both move. So inhale, the belly expands. Inhale, the wings, the ears of the elephant expand. Exhale, the belly relaxes, the ears fall back. And try to feel like you were just filling this bowl of the pelvis with this vast breath more and more until slowly but surely you feel yourself get calmer and calmer and under that survival tension that is there. And we want to know that we're safe wherever we are. So that's the mantra. I am safe, All right? And you can add to it, I am safe right now. I am safe in this moment. I am safe in this space. I am safe in my body. I am safe in my life, right? How big can you get with this safe thing? <laughs> How safe can you feel, right? And that's the phrase I want you to use as you work with this breath low. I am safe in my body. I am safe now in my life, right? So you develop a mantra using first chakra energy. As you breathe and you feel those elephant ears move, inhaling, the pelvic floor expands, exhaling, the pelvic floor relaxes, inhaling, the pelvic floor expands. Exhale, the pelvic floor relaxes and the belly does the same. Inhale, the belly expands. Exhale, the belly relaxes. And this is how you start to heal autoimmune system problems, is to correct the breath and to practice every day this healthy breathing of inhaling, the belly expands. Exhale, the belly relaxes. And just let it flow like that as you use your mantra inside that, I am safe. I am safe now. I am safe in this moment, in my life, in my body, in myself. In my pelvis, in my life force. And what shuts down for chakra energy is what often with as children we are told we are too big, too much, too loud, right? Too everything. And we just start shutting it down. Year after year, it gets more and more shut down. I am safe now to be me. Oh, there's the better one. Here we go. I am safe now to be me. Om. I am safe now to be me, to be myself, uncensored, open, beautiful self. Inhale, the pelvis expands. Exhale, the pelvis relaxes. Notice how you feel from when we began and the emotions that are now there from when we began. What has changed? 
Good. So when you're ready to, letting your breath get deeper and fuller until it starts to feel natural to transition out of this meditation.